You know, I was reminded of a, of a conversation and of a song when there was a musician talking to a congregation about the glory of God. And he was talking about how he was sitting under a pastor and he said, what should we write about? And that pastor said, you know, I don't hear very many songs anymore about the glory of God. And so he, he, he introduced the song that he was about to sing. It was just simply uh, about the glory of God. It was so simple. It was so pure. And <clears throat> what the pastor said, he said, because if we'd sing about the glory, when the glory's in the room, nothing else matters. You don't need a mic. No one needs to sing. When the glory's in the room, the goodness of God, the, pre the, the manifest presence of God, really nothing else matters. And I believe, um, I believe this is, it's what, it's what his, his people desire. I believe it's what all of creation yearns for. When the Bible says it groans, it yearns. Even maybe you've had, uh, I don't know, I, I know like for me there's been, um, there was a there was a, a, a dream vision or, or something along those lines where uh, I found myself just laying on the floor. I, I don't know that I've walked in this yet, but where I was just laying on the floor because you couldn't even stand. And there wasn't anything but just the glory of God. Is that enough? More than enough. Just a moment with you, Lord. We magnify you tonight. We use our words to set our love on you. Father, we love you. Nothing like your presence. There's nothing like your presence. wanted to read um, something by Pastor Lynn Hammond that um, she said back in February. Um, she wrote, I have been waiting for this my entire life. Revival in the form of waiting on the presence of Jesus with zero agenda or a hurry up to life's next event. Just the sweet presence of Jesus for as long as your heart feels to stay. It's an atmosphere that's hard to leave feels like oxygen straight from heaven. It's an extreme honor to give him our time and attention in this way. And then she just said, we invite you to come and spend time waiting on him with us. And I wanted to read that. Um, really, the Holy Spirit's so cool. All day I just kind of saw service going this way. And um, all week I had told him I had a message. But um, then as it got closer, 
it's like I just began to see pictures of what tonight really was. And um, really what I sense and what we've sensed lately and what I feel like God's not just doing here, but he's doing around the world in the body of Christ is there's a drawing back to him. And, you know, I just talked to someone last night. We had a night of prayer. And I talked to um, someone last night. And she said, you know what I found is I just, I just want to read my Bible more. I've just been reading my Bible more. I just, it's like I just want to go away to my room and, and read. Um, we were talking to one of our boys. And he said, it just seems like, you know, where before maybe you could kind of be lukewarm or you could kind of what they call ride the fence. You know, you're not all the way in, you're not all the way out. And maybe where it was okay before, or you could kind of get by with it. He said, I just feel like I see that now you really either have to be all in or all out. And really, what is God doing? He's drawing you to himself because there's a plan and a purpose. And what's awesome is when he draws you to his heart, you always leave refreshed, built up. You get direction. You get everything that you need to accomplish his will. And um, I was listening today, and um, Brother Hagen said this. Someone, um, it was actually Pastor Mark Hankins that referenced this, but he said, Brother Hagen said, if you'll spend just a little time in his presence, it will help you. <laughs> Sounds simple, doesn't it? But, you know, in the hurry up and the hustle and bustle of life, I think it's pretty cool that one of the main ways I feel like God's moving right now is just slow, causing us to slow down and wait on him. And how many of you know, because of our fast-paced life and agenda and where we have to be and time schedules, even it creeps into church sometimes with what you would say, order of service, or a way that we do service, which is great. But it can cause us, even as believers, to, to feel like we have to go to the next thing. And so in our culture, any kind of waiting, it actually goes against the flesh of, I, I got to do something. You know, just a moment of pausing. I've even talked to our worship team before. Sometimes you have to pause for a minute, and sometimes he doesn't even want you to sing. He just wants the instruments to play. He doesn't want anyone on the stage to talk. He just wants to play, and he wants to minister to you, and the presence of the Lord is here strong and heavy. We actually witnessed it last night in Night of Prayer. There was a time where it was just quiet just quiet but you know what was amazing it wasn't quiet if that makes sense it was quiet but it wasn't quiet because God was speaking God was doing things in the hearts of people God was downloading things what's amazing is in the times of God's presence in this way when you begin to wait on him he he downloads things to you that you know you couldn't get any other way if the Lord's wanting to, to do it a certain way, but we think we got to do it this way, how many of you know we miss what he's, he's over here doing it this way, but we want to do it this way because our flesh doesn't want to wait or we don't want to take the time. But I just think there's something God's wanting to do with just, um, just, just his presence. And, and downloading, downloading. So I wanted to read the rest of what um, Brother Hagen said. So he said, if you'll uh, spend just a little time in his presence, it will help you. The quietness and calmness, the deep sounded peace that pervades the Godhead and unshaken faith will fill your heart and your life. You can receive things just by being in his presence. Now, sometimes when we hear just by being in his presence, we just think presence, but he's a person. He's real. And I love what Brother Hagen said here. You know, if I'm in the presence of somebody, I, I can get things. When you're in the presence with your father, 
with Almighty God, it you can get things instant. Just why? Just from the proximity of of being in that person's presence. What did you see when Jesus went about? The people who got healed were the ones who were in proximity to him. There's something about taking time to sit with him. Reading our Bible, yes. Praying, yes. All that's great. But we miss a big chunk of stuff if we're not just taking time to just sit quiet before him. What That story of Mary and Martha, right? What did Mary do? She was just happy to be in his presence, sit at his feet. Um, so we're going to do that here in a minute. But um, I want us to just kind of stay where we're at. And Rodney, you can keep playing. Um, I wanted to read um, this word of the Lord that came through Pastor Lynn. And this actually came out yesterday. Um, and I was listening to it today and I just thought it was so pertinent. So I want you to just close your eyes um, and just really take in what what the Spirit's saying because I believe this is just such an on-time word. So the Spirit of the Lord said this, This is not a sunset. This is a sunrise, a new era, a new season, and a new day. All things will be different now, and you will see. You will be amazed at what I do and how I do it. Many, many surprises will come your way. Where you've seen doors open, they're actually now portals. You will just move from, from one realm right into the next one. What you have known of ministry up to this day, everything is changing now. That is the reason you must be with me. You don't want to miss the change. You want to be flowing right in the rivers and streams of God. And you will hear calls, calls, calling you upward. Come away with me, says the Spirit. And then you will hear, go. So it will be the comings and the goings of the Bible. And you'll get very used to that, says the Lord. Very used to the comings and the goings. There is a great harvest to be gotten. And it will be gotten very quickly as people stand in the place that God wants them to stand. But it will not come without this process of development. Where before my face you will be changed from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. Thank you, Lord. So we just receive that word. We receive that word. Just here in your presence tonight. So I just want, um, if you can turn up the keys. And I'm just, I just want Rodney to um, play here. And I want us to just do what this is saying, what I feel like the Spirit was really wanting to do tonight, was just to download some things. And you know what's so amazing about the Father is it, it tells us in His Word that if you draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. If you hunger and thirst for Him, He promises to fill you. And you know... When you're hungry, have you ever been there before where you're hungry and you just don't really know what you're hungry for, you're just hungry? Some of you may know specifically what you're hungry for. Others of you may not even know what you're hungry for. You just know you're hungry. And you know what he promises to do? To fill you. To fill you. And you know, in those moments of his presence when you hunger for him, I was sharing this with someone last night at Night of Prayer. I said, the amazing thing is, when you eat naturally and you're hungry and you eat a nice meal, you're satisfied and you're filled up. What's amazing with God is when you hunger for him and he fills you, you're never satisfied. You are for a moment, but it just causes you to want more. And you know what's amazing is he never runs dry. His presence is always there. You know, it's so awesome to have corporate anointing corporate times where we can come together in his presence but there's always this presence available to you right where you are in your home in your car and just being that that's just been my prayer lately is that we're just people of his presence people of his word but we're people of his presence where when he's calling us 
Just like Samuel, what did Samuel say? Here am I, Lord. Here am I, your servant is listening. So I just believe tonight as we just spend some time just waiting on him, you know, you may come to the altar, you're free to do that. You may have a notebook that you want to write stuff in. You may get out your Bible. You do whatever you have to do. But I want us to just wait in his presence and just let him minister to us tonight. Amen.
I'm going to read from Luke 4. Jesus said in Luke 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth and deliver those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He said, where the, when, where the spirit of the Lord is, when it's upon you, when it's in, it, there's, a, there's a time to, to, to speak, to proclaim, to announce to captives, maybe even, and I just saw even just this, this announcement that's been going off in my heart uh, to just be proclaimed and to be announced here. It's easy to receive from the Lord in this place. It's an announcement proclamation it's easy to hear from the Lord to be restored to meet redemption to receive light it's easy Maybe there's some things that you need to proclaim even in this moment concerning what the Lord would say to your heart. And he said, say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to, to say something, to preach, to, to, to proclaim, to announce. To release words. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we pray for and we declare tonight the blessing of the Lord upon this people, the multiplication of life, of resources, of healing, of wholeness and well-being. We declare the adding, the adding to and the multiplication of a body holy, filled, and flooded with God himself. We declare to you that the hand of the Lord is resting might mightily upon this people and this place. Everyone and every part in their designated place, giving fully of their supply and receiving the full blood flow of this body. No division in this house. Subtraction and division will be far from this place and from this people. We declare that you make us effective in this generation. That you expand our coasts. That you expand the place of our effectiveness in this hour. That you expand our reach. 
we proclaim and announce and acknowledge the graces and everything, every good thing that is in us by Christ Jesus. We announce and we proclaim Jesus is Lord. Lord of every body. Lord over every sickness. Lord over every name that would try and rise in opposition of Jesus Christ. We proclaim, we announce to you, Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So God changed worlds. God changed worlds with words. And he's still changing worlds with words. And bold declarations bring great manifestations. Announcements. The binding, the loosing, the the announcing, the proclaiming, the bold declarations. Our words. I've heard that before. I've heard about the power of words. I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Father, I thank you for even that release of revelation concerning the things that you're speaking right now of words. That which could not be articulated, that which could not be taught, but only the things that could be caught. Father, I thank you right now for just a releasing today and a releasing tonight concerning uh, your words. So the, the hope and yet the trap. The hope and yet the trap, it's in your mouth. Where you're caught and yet where, uh, where you're to go to. It's in your mouth. Worlds. Worlds changed by words. Father, thank you for that. The strength of your words, the strength of your words strength of your words. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They've been discounted. They've been discounted. And so the words that are to be spoken and the words that are spoken from us many times, they come from a place of anger or they come from a place of sadness. But partnered with God, you'll find that they come from a place of joy and expectation. The Lord's been dealing with me this week. I would say it started Monday night in the middle of the night concerning forgiveness. I woke up, I saw a face, and I heard the Lord speak to me and say, say, I forgive them. Tell them you forgive them. Now, was I supposed to go to that person and manipulate them and tell them I forgive you for being? No. But there was something that had to happen And I didn't realize I was holding on to anything. But the fruit that I was was the fruit of anger. 
I was frustrated. I was irritated. I was fed up. After all I've done, after all, like just, just tired. But then I'd moved from this place one day and maybe the next next day, maybe even the next moment when you would catch your heart my heart would break and it would grieve for them. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever been there where you're like, maybe you have a family member, maybe it's typically with somebody that's a loved one where you want something so bad for them, but you you want it so bad for him, you just want to hit him upside the head. But then at the same time, you want it so bad for him that your heart hurts and you grieve and you you're in sorrow and you're and neither one of those things produce the righteousness of God neither one of them Luke chapter 1 and I taught, was talking about this with our staff a little bit this week um, and this is the story of Mary who received a word from the Lord and the result was great joy. When I'm angry, when I'm sad, I'm not holding the word that brings about, as Mary said, with God, all things are possible. When I'm angry, when I'm sad, I'll begin to complain and I'll bring the worst of the past into the present and forecast it into the future. But here, but here Mary says, for he who is almighty, I'm going to stop right there, for he who is almighty, the things that you're maybe this way for, I'm giving words out of frustration, I'm giving words out of sadness, I'm giving words out of this, I'm giving words out of this, I'm giving words, and worlds are being created with words. You wonder why the world that, the world that you live in, maybe you haven't been able to get out of the bubble, because you've shirted it up with words. But Mary said, for he who is almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name to be venerated, to be honored, to be revered. He has done great things. This is a statement by Mary when she, right after she heard a word of the Lord, of what God said to her. And she said, am I nine months? Am I, am I, how, how pregnant am I? For he has done great things. Who has done? Almighty. Man, there's joy. And it goes into the, something that maybe if you were reading, it, maybe in your Bible it would have a heading and it would say Mary's song. I believe that even in our own lives, words that are to be released, they're to be proclaimed, they're to be, they're to be preached, they're to be declared, they're to be sung. They're to be sung in this season. You know, there's something about how the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the things that, of what we're talking about, even in waiting, how many of you know it takes strength to wait? And he says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not grow tired. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's a song that is to be sung from, from our own hearts, not one of sorrow, not Eeyore, not one of frustration and anger, but a song that it would be, in a sense, sung and, and, and come up and out of the place of holding to Almighty. Holding to Almighty with God. Almighty has... And, and in that place and in that song and in that release of those words from your heart that originate with eyes on one, worlds change. 
your sons, your daughters, your friends, the lost that you've been sent to, that we've been sent to. Words, they matter. They matter. So Father, we just ask you even for now to put a guard over our mouth concerning the things to put us in check. And for just understanding of, in a sense, a deputizing of your people. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, in your mouth, from His mouth, a two-edged sword, out of God's mouth and out of your mouth. Out of God's mouth and out of your mouth. You've been deputized. To enforce, to root out, to pull up, to tear down, and to expand. Because I want my house full. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for a guard and a check. We spoke to this last night at Night of Prayer. It gives very much validity to the new birth and that when any man is in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come, 2 Corinthians 5. In Acts, when there was an evil spirit, He responded to these people that didn't know Jesus Christ as Lord. He said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? He recognized, this spirit recognized a new creation. And a creation that had authority over him. I know that they have authority over me. I know that the people of God have authority over me. But who are you? And you remember they ran away naked. We don't need to be naked. Our words, your words... They are very much recognized in worlds. And the same way God used words to change worlds, He's still using words to change worlds. My sons, that happened to them this morning, coming to prayer. I sat in here, and the Lord said, send them words. So I declared to them, I, that, that's what I said in a text. I, I told them I love them, and I want to declare to you today who you are. I got an emoji times three back of a smiley face, teary-eyed, welling up, tears, words, changed worlds. Let's change some worlds. Let's turn some things upside down. Let's use our authority coming from having been with Jesus, having been in His presence, 
it was even I, I just think about that the, the amount of transfiguration or or Moses having been with Jesus his their faces it, they shined having been with him and I just believe that's a to be uh, a testimony of the, these times and um, and you know with what Pastor Evan uh, was was talking about about waiting on the Lord this is something that we've been talking about in, in our house for for quite some time about just waiting longer and reverence just a reverence I remember when we were at Bible school and this is kind of a funny thing a funny story but Brother Hagen would walk in and the, he taught in what they called uh, SDC one it was the uh, biggest room uh, auditorium like a 1500 seat auditorium but it was in the school not in the church building and um, and so all the students first second third fourth year would be in that class for his 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 um, lectures or his teaching and we were blessed to be able to have like front row seats in both classes our friends were like what happened what, what did you do I said Jesus loves us anyway um, <laughs> And, and one day, he was always right on time. And I don't know how this started, but it started and everybody did it. But somebody would be sitting in that chair over on the corner, and they could see down those doors, down the hallway. And you would be able to see him coming, maybe, I don't know, a fairly long corridor. And so when he would see him coming, he would stand up. And when he would stand up, all of the room would stand up. Everybody would just stand up. There wasn't applause. There was just a standing. And then he would say, thank you. You may be seated. One day, he didn't show up. And after about five or six, seven, maybe ten minutes, the guy on the corner decided he was going to stand. Everybody stood and waited and waited. And then he sat down and started laughing. And then the whole crowd burst out and laughing. And uh, somebody ended up coming in that day and said, oh, this, uh, he wasn't able to make it and whatever. But there is something about standing at attention. That just that. You know, have you been there when maybe your grandpa's speaking something that you just know you need to hear? Like he's, he came and like, why, why is he here? He doesn't come except for with purpose, you know? And I just believe that um, reverence is on the rise in this house. Yeah, I believe reverence is on the rise in the body of Christ. I believe there's a standing and a calling at attention. And um, uh, oh, you know what that means? Oh, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, no. It's like this. You know, this this hands are hands are are, are not preoccupied. Like everything is attention. And uh, I believe there's, in, there's impartations and deposits and all those things that are coming and, and will co continue to come in these times. And um, rest in it. Don't strive for it. Rest in it. Don't seek a feeling. Don't seek a sign. Just seek him. Just love him. And let, we'll just let him do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. And it'll be the same way. You'll just recognize that he stepped into the room. We'll just say, Lord, speak. You know? Amen? Amen. Okay, I can dismiss. Okay, everybody. I want to remind you of three things. Number one, we have prayer 
uh, if it, the sanctuary is open, it's not like we're doing corporate prayer every morning, but the sanctuary, we've been opening up at 6 until 8.30 in the morning uh, with some instrumental music playing. It's been a special time. Um, if you want to come, you're more than welcome to any time, 5 minutes, 10, whatever, uh, 6 to 8.30, and we're going to just do that until further notice. Um, this is the second week of that. And then secondly, um, just a reminder of our Bible reading. Um, it's been it's been special. I've heard a lot of. For me, it's been. Uh, I just feel like it's he's speaking every every day in those places. Not that he's not other places, but I believe it's been very special. I've heard great testimonies about it. Today was Luke four. It's actually where I read out of. Um, and then, lastly, I wanted to remind you of our Bible memory, which is this this week it was James. What was it? Come on, somebody help me out. James. Four, seven. So what does he say? Do what first? Submit to the Lord. Submit to God and resist the devil and he'll run and he'll flee and he'll flee. So James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. Amen. We just bless you guys uh, tonight as you go. Father, thank you for families here. Thank you for fathers. Thank you for mothers. Thank you for equipping them. Thank you for empowering them uh, in their homes, in the drive on the way to work, in the drive on the way to school. Father, in the the God talks around the kitchen counter in those moments. Father, thank you for anointing the... This, this, these people uh, to, to raise up a, a generation and a child, and children and in the house you would show up as you did in Malachi when you were being magnified. You would just show up in those places and in those spaces. And we would be a people that know you. That, that we would be a people that know you. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We will see you Sunday.